This week, the Federal Reserve announced its first interest rate hike in three years. And it wasn't a total shock. Experts had anticipated this quarter point rate, with forecasts showing it's only the first of several hikes this year. It comes as a lot of Americans are feeling that pinch at the gas station and the checkout counter because of months of rising inflation, the kind of thing we haven't seen in decades. Historically, you know, interest hikes can be an effective way to tame inflation, but how long will it take to play out? And what does it mean for you? NBC's business and tech correspondent, Joe Lynn Kent, takes a look in our Sunday Focus. The last time Americans saw inflation soar this high was more than 40 years ago. Ending inflation means freeing all Americans from the terror of runaway living costs. It was 1981. The Federal Reserve, chaired by Paul Volcker, hiked interest rates to record heights after a decade of sky-high prices. The prime lending rate went back up to a crushing 20 percent today. The goal was to tame inflation, exacerbated by the fuel shortage of the 1970s that triggered long lines for gas nationwide. And they try to blame it on us as the dealer, and uh, it certainly isn't our fault. It's a proven solution. Higher interest rates make it more expensive to borrow money, like for homes and cars, inflicting some controlled pain on the economy so spending slows and prices come down. Fast forward to 2022. Every week is something new. It's beef prices, it's produce, it's avocados, it's takeout containers. Now it's fuel. Inflation is now nearly 8 percent, the highest since Reagan was president. In every aspect, it's higher, you know, but your wages don't go up any higher. Triggering Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to raise interest rates for the first time since 2018. The FOMC raised its policy interest rate by one quarter percentage point. But this time around, what's driving inflation is pretty different than the 70s and 80s. This is a pretty unique situation because it's very much tied up with the pandemic and all of the fiscal support that Congress enacted because of the pandemic. Consumers are facing a never-before-seen trifecta of a pandemic with record consumer demand, a strong jobs market, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So when the pandemic hit and money was poured into the economy by way of stimulus checks and slashed interest rates, as well as money injected into the economy by the Fed, many consumers who could afford it started buying a lot more stuff. That collided with supply chain problems around the world. And still, many of America's biggest corporations reported record profits because they raised their prices and sold more goods. Do you think that companies are raising prices? because they can, just by the laws of supply and demand. They are facing an extraordinary increase in demand for their goods, and lo and behold, in response, they're raising prices. That is raising profits, just as you'd expect that any company seeing a big demand for its goods should become more profitable. The Fed says inflation is expected to be high through this summer before coming down sharply next year. What is your message to consumers out there who can no longer afford the basics? We very much take to heart that, that it's our obligation to, to restore price stability, bring inflation back down to more normal levels, which our, our target is, is 2 percent. And Joe joins us now live. Joe, good morning to you. Listen, this this rate hike that we just saw this week may be the first in a while, but we don't think it's going to be the last, right? What are you expecting down the road? Hey, Hallie, good morning. Brace yourself for another six rate hikes this year with the next one at the upcoming Fed meeting in May. Now, this will make mortgages, car loans and credit card debt much more expensive across the board. And now there are also some fears of a recession around the corner, given how much the Fed's raising rates right now. Right. So when I asked Chair Powell about that worries of layoffs and job losses down the road, he told me that he thinks the job market will remain strong and said that he believes the Fed can get inflation down from about 8% right now to about 2% next year. But he left the door open that the Fed might need to adapt and change its mind depending on how our economy fares. Hallie. Leaving some room for flexibility for sure. Joel and Ken, yeah. thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.